Hello, everybody. The Google Keyword Planner is a fantastic tool for keyword discovery, but it's kind of hard to use. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you step by step through how to use the Google Keyword Planner. Let's get started. So welcome back. Uh, first of all, I want to explain that in order to use the Google AdWords Keyword Planner, you need to have an active AdWords account. You can sign up at the link at ads.google.com. Of course, I have all the links in the YouTube description. You'll need a credit card. And the really annoying thing is until you spend money, you'll only get sort of parameters of volumes and values. They won't give you the full data. So you need to spend a couple hundred dollars, I would say, in order to get data. So you're gonna sign up and then we can dive into the tool. All right, so now that you've signed up, I wanna go through step-by-step -step some of the features of the tool. So I'm gonna go over here to my AdWords account and it's under tools keyword planner so that's how you find it when you're in it you're going to then going to click on find new keywords and let me type in cat boarding because we're using the example of jason's cat boarding and hit your enter key and then you'll get into it or you click uh, get keyword ideas so i'm inside the tool once i'm inside the tool let me show you some of the basic um, features that you want to go over Okay, first of all, you put your keyword here at the top. That first little screen is sort of a, a stupid little device of Google's. It's useless. Just hit your keyword and then you get into the actual interface. So here's where you type in your starter keyword. And then this left column is what I call the idea column. So you'll see that we've got our, our seed keyword cat boarding. And then this is a great tool for giving you synonyms. So it'll give you dog, cat kennels, lots of good ideas there. And we'll go through that in just a second. Then you're going to see your average monthly searches. These are how many searches occur per month for the term. So you can see for cat boarding, we're at 12,100. Up here at the top, you'll see... Uh, that it says United States. This is where you set your locations, and I'll return to that in a second. You generally want a really broad location, such as the United States, Canada, United Kingdom. Don't try to do this for Omaha, Nebraska, or Bixby, Oklahoma. The tool doesn't work at really specific locations and volumes. And then here are your networks. Again, I would generally leave both Google and search partners because you need a lot of data uh, to make this work. The next column you want to look at is this top of page and high and low bid. This is the amount you need to pay per click, essentially, in order to get your ads to run. So for cat boarding, we pretty much need to bid $1.23. Now, they do give you a low range and a high range. I generally find the low range is a little bit more accurate. Uh, again, it's sort of heuristic. I don't know why they did this. So just choose the low range. And again, it's kind of a good way to know what your bid should be. All right, let me walk you through a couple other issues. All right, so we entered here. If you click up of here, and let's say you don't want to do cat boarding, this is where you could change this. Type in pet boarding or whatever keyword you're, you're going to research. Hit get results, and then it's going to reset it based on pet boarding. So that's where you put that in here. Then this left column, this is your idea column. So if you put in a kind of a generic like pet boarding, you'll see dog kennels, cats, cat grooming, dog walker, you see puppies. You can see all these really good words that you can discover with that starter word, pet boarding, cat boarding, whatever. Then you have your volumes down here. You have your bids. You can click on any column and sort by ascending, descending, whatever. And you can see that they're, the biggest searches are for dog kennels, 368,000. But you can also search uh, or sort rather by the values. And you can see that the value dog walking is 969 a click. So you can start to get some sense there of what's uh, going on. Let's go back and put in cat boarding. and hit get results. This uh, 
column in the middle here or this uh, row in the middle, those are the trends. I find that pretty useless unless you're in something that's uh, cyclical, like say tax return preparation, which is really high in April, or maybe gift ideas, which is really high in November and December. It's not particularly useful that that's there. The other thing I did want to show you is click into broadly related and you can change to closely related. And this is when you just want to look at stuff that's relating to cats, you know, to cat boarding, make it closely related, and then you can see uh, what's going on. So this is a good feature here to play around with is closely and broadly related as you're uh, looking for your uh, keyword data. Uh, so that's an idea there. All right, so we've covered the keyword column, the idea column on the left, the monthly search volume. There's a couple others in their competition. I don't find that particularly useful. That's Google trying to tell you um, how many uh, how much how many advertisers are competing for something. I do look at my uh, top of uh, page bids. Those tell me my CPCs. A couple other weird little features I want to make sure you're aware of. Inside of it, I did show you this broadly, closely. That's up here. Uh, this is your location, United States, UK. Don't don't try anything like a state. It doesn't work. It's too small. Uh, Google and search partners. Uh, I would generally leave that to Google and search partners. A couple other cool things you can do. You can click it downward, download keyword ideas and it'll pull all of your data into an Excel, and then you can open up that Excel, and it'll give you um, some data to work with, and you can sort it and crunch it and all the cool things you can do in Excel, a much more sophisticated way of arranging that. So it's really good to be able to download the data, so you wanna be able to do that. That's kind of, it's not really hidden, but it's up here at the top right. Filter is also useful. You can click on filter and let's say you just wanted to look at say walking like in dog walking. So to do filter you click on filter and then click on keyword text and then put contains say walking for let's say you're looking at dog walking or something and that will then filter all those terms to just terms that include the word walking. So that's another useful uh, feature there. On the far right, you can click on columns, and this is where you can modify the columns if you're missing uh, some of the features. I generally enable all the columns uh, and, and look at them in that way. So that's over here kind of hidden on the right. Next, let me show you something that's kind of useful, uh, which has to do with the pattern from educational to transactional. So let's go back to the very beginning. Let's click Find Keywords, and let's put in knee pain and hit uh, enter, knee surgery and hit enter, and then knee surgeon and hit enter, and then click on get started. So let's say you're researching, you know, kind of the customer journey, and you want to look at the patterns from volume to value. So we put in knee pain, knee surgery, knee surgeon. So somebody like my knee hurts, that's the educational. Oh my goodness, I need surgery. How does that work? That's getting close to a transaction. And knee surgeon, you know, I know I need this done. Uh, who am I going to hire to do this? Okay, so you have those three, you entered them up here, and then you'll see in these columns, you have knee surgeon, knee pain, knee surgery, and then look at your volumes, and you'll see that knee pain has the most volume, 165,000, but the lowest value, the lowest cost per click, that's because that's like, I need an aspirin, right? Versus say, knee surgeon, you're getting up into the 271 per click, cost that's because that's a lot more valuable there's a lot more money so what you can do is take a few of your terms especially those that kind of reflect the customer journey from educational to transactional put them in here uh, one two three and then run the search uh, on the keyword planner and then look at your uh, average monthly searches and your uh, bids and that's a good way to learn uh, what's going on in terms of uh, volume versus value trade-off Next, let's look at the old keyword planner. So there are a few functions that are in the old planner that are not in the new planner, and you want to be able to toggle between those. So go into the tool, go to keyword planner, and then down here on the bottom right, you'll see open previous keyword planner. It's a little bit hidden. Click on that, and then that's going to revert us into the old keyword planner, which was a cleaner interface. They've kind of uh, 
jumbled things up at Google in terms of how they do this. I, I don't think they're doing a particularly good job at user interface design. All right, so it's similar in that you can type your keywords in here, but it's a cleaner interface. You get all of the, the goodies, all of the connections are here. So I actually like it a little bit better. Uh, you can type that in here, so you can put in knee pain, whatever, and run it, and, or let's put in uh, catboarding. Let's, well, let's, put, let's stick with knee pain. Let's put in knee pain and hit get ideas. And now you're in the old interface, uh, and it's just a little bit cleaner. So you have your idea column, your uh, competition, you know, high, medium, low, your average volume, and your suggested bid. They also have a neat feature here called Add Group Ideas. That does not exist in the new tool. What I like about this is it'll group them by themes. And so you can sort of get some thematic data here as to what Google thinks would be a good uh, semantically connected clump of keywords. Let's put in catboarding, for instance, and hit get ideas. And then you can see here, it does a nice job at the ad group level. Dog kennels, obviously not relevant, but pet hotel, pet sitter, those might be relevant. So it's it's good for, for kind of grouping things. So this ad group idea doesn't exist in the new tool. Now let's go back out to the tool, back to the beginning. Each time you open up the old interface, you're locked into it. There's no way to get out of it. You either have to close the browser window or go up to the top and type in ads.google.com uh, to get out of the tool. But one thing I think is kind of interesting is click here and then you can see here product category. This also doesn't exist in the new version. And you can go down here and you can put in health and you can select health conditions, allergy and sinus, get ideas. So you can kind of use this as a way uh, if you're really broad, to put in categories and brainstorm ideas. So that's a feature uh, that's only in the old interface, not in the new interface. So I like that feature if I'm, I'm doing some research for something really broad and I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'm blogging or something and I want to find some terms for blogging. So that's another feature uh, that's missing. All right, now both the old and the new have a feature I haven't shown you which is to take a URL. So let's take a URL for someone that maybe we're competing against. So here's like rover.com slash cat sitting, and you can paste the URL of a competitor in. You can do entire site, you can do keyword, whatever. So you can take a landing page from a competitor, put it in, and then use it to get ideas. So that's another way uh, to brainstorm is to use a competitor, use your own URL, and again, think out of the box here uh, as to what's available, and you do that by entering a URL. All right, so that's a quick rundown of how to use the Google Keyword Planner. Uh, let's sort of wrap up and think of what are we trying to get out of this whole exercise by using the tool. So first and foremost, you're trying to get keyword ideas. So you're gonna put in cat boarding. You wanna make sure that you realize pet boarding is also relevant. Dog boarding is not relevant. If you put in attorney, you know, personal injury attorney, you wanna realize attorney, lawyer, law firm. So you wanna make sure you get those synonyms. Secondly, you want to look for your helpers. You'll often see best, top, top rated, negative keywords like cheap or free. So you're looking at those keyword patterns. That's the most important thing you're getting out of the tool. Uh, secondly, you're looking for the volume. So you're looking for where is the money, where, or not where is the money, but where's the volume, where are the searches. So there's a lot of searches for pet boarding, not so many for cat boarding, uh, not any for iguana boarding. So you're looking for keyword volume data. Now, don't fall into the trap of thinking it's all volume because some keywords are very high value. There's not a lot of searches for luxury cat boarding, but those are very high value because those are people who don't have uh, a, an objection to spending a lot of money. So don't fall into the trap of thinking it's all about volume. Lots of volume for knee pain, not a lot of money, not so much volume for knee surgery. Finally, you're looking for the cost per click uh, data, so you're pulling the community which keywords have money behind them. So it's a good tool for discovering where the money is uh, because people bid up the keywords that have uh, either a lot of uh, money behind them per se or are likely to end in a sale. 
Uh, at the end of this exercise, right, you want to move on to the next step, which is to organize your keyword worksheet, uh, which we cover in a separate video. So sign up for AdWords, check out the AdWord Keyword Planner, the Google Keyword Planner, play around with it, have a good attitude. When you're in the tool, just remember, you know, the best way to use Google products is just to click on everything you see and sort of like figure out what does this do. Google does not do a good job with interface design. So just kind of click around and you'll see there's a lot of really powerful functionality uh, in the tool. Just you've got to click on all the different features to discover them. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching. Uh, comments in the YouTube uh, video description below and have fun with your keyword discovery.